Hey, howdy, hey, everybody. It's Rhino. I'm here today at Disney's Hollywood Studios inside of Toy Story Land because guess what? Roundup Rodeo Barbecue, a brand new sit-down restaurant, has just opened. We've got reservations. I'm here with Craig, Erica, and the wonderful uh, Kylie. I was distracted. There was a tall guy behind me who just took my saying. So that threw me for a loop. But uh, before we get started on today's dining review, I want to remind everybody that this and everything that we do here is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts in helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. When you book with them, it costs you nothing extra on your trip and you help support the channel and all the content that we produce here. So check them out, Dreams Unlimited Travel. Dot com. Sabrina, don't forget about them. Uh, and uh, now that I have said that, I think we're going to go inside here. But one thing I want to just point out as you head into the restaurant here, and as you go to find your seat, you're going to want to keep your eyes peeled because I hear that there are some fun hidden details like hidden Mickeys, but not just Mickey. They've got some hidden Oswalds. Apparently hidden tacos are a thing in there. So make sure you're communicating with your server in there. Ask about all those fun details as you go to sit down because there is a lot to look at in this restaurant. But I'm sure you're tired of listening to me. Let's go check out the food and the inside of this, this brand new establishment. Inside of the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue, and in here, it's interesting. I, I, honestly, there's, um, I, I like it. It's a lot of like, it delivers on that like theme of it feels like Andy made this in his backyard somewhere because this whole wall, the not the one behind me, but the one I'm looking at is all like puzzle. Like it's all made out of like puzzle pieces. And then the one behind me is still the sort of like stand-up figurines that have all been drawn on by a kid. And um, there's like little mini versions of uh, Bo Peep with her sheep and everything in here. And I don't know, it, it really, it carries through the theme of the land very nice. But what's also cool is I like the, the, the way the lighting is. It's very like, it's lower. And it feels like in the heat of the summer coming in here, this is going to be like a super nice reprieve. The dim lights, I, honestly, I feel like it's gonna be one of those things once you stuff your face, it's gonna be like, I don't wanna go, I wanna take a nap in here. And uh, I can't speak to that yet, but we'll see at the end if I wanna take a little nap time. But so far, so good, fresh and new, I like it. I went to the bathroom, they're small. One urinal, two stalls in the men's room. Ladies, I can't speak to it. Didn't go in there yet, we'll see what happens. But um, no, it's fine, so far. I like it, but I haven't had any food yet, so it could be all downhill or it could be all uphill. Either way, we're on, we're facing some hills. It is beautiful in here. I so I love this. It reminds me of the rest of the land. It is just very immersive. I I really enjoy it. Um, Rhino mentioned the lighting, and I think the lighting is actually better in the section behind us than in here. But I do think that this is the perfect place to be when it is like a million degrees outside in Toy Story Land because there's there's literally no shade out there. So it, this is a nice little break. And so far, I'm loving it. I love all the details. It's just, it's just really cute. If you love Toy Story, you're going to love this space. 
Erica and Rhino have already said so much about the details in here that I don't really have a lot to add. It blends in perfectly with the land, of course. I, I, you just you can't help but love the theme here. It is just so cute and whimsical. Way bigger inside than I thought it would be. Uh, there's a lot of seating in here, so there's going to be a lot of people able to jo enjoy all of the barbecue here. But I will say, too, don't be afraid to look up and down because it's not just all the walls that are themed and some of the props inside. The, the floors are also themed, like right behind me, I believe you can see a bandana. And then up above, we've got, like, uh, it's a display with Buzz Lightyear, but you see comic strips on the other side, uh, games. It, it's just, it is all over the place. I know there's wrapping paper used as the, the flooring somewhere in here, too. It's just, it is head-to-toe detailed all around here. And while we've been taking in that detail, we got our first course, the Prospector's Homemade Cheddar Biscuits. I'm hoping these are like Cheddar Bay Biscuits from Red Lobster because everyone knows that Cheddar Bay Biscuits are the superior biscuit of choice for anything in life. And red pepper jelly, I hope it's a little bit, a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy. High hopes for this. I don't think it's better than a Cheddar Bay Biscuit. That's just my opinion, but once you add in that sweet pepper jelly, it does exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, adds the sweetness to it, adds a little bit of heat. It's a really nice biscuit. I mean, it's flaky, falling apart. Oh, good start, good start. This restaurant is the absolute cutest. I love the theme. As soon as you walk in, it looks like it's drawn on the inside of a cardboard box. We had the cheddar biscuit and let me tell you, that is delicious. Uh, the cheddar comes through really well, and it's just a fluffy, delightful biscuit. <gasps> Where is it? I know I left it around here somewhere. Mom, have you seen my cowboy belt buckle? I can't find it. Never mind. I love the biscuits. They were soft and the pepper jelly was good. And the server said that we should put brisket in the middle of it. I'll report back on that later. Anyway, we started after that with, uh, it's the get a wiggle on your greens. I don't know if I understand that phrase, but here we are. So we got all three of the salads, which is the root and toot and tomato salad, which is cucumbers, pickled red onions, white balsamic vinaigrette, and then the Rex's Romaine and Kale Salad, which supposedly came with apples, dried cranberries, pumpkin seeds, and a green goddess dressing. And then Wheezy's Watermelon Salad, which was had fresh torn mint on it. So first of all, the Wheezy's Watermelon Salad was just like kind of cubed watermelon. It was very good, very fresh watermelon, but the mint did nothing for it. I don't think it sat with the watermelon enough to do anything. So it was just like nice chunks of watermelon. Um, the Romaine Salad had nothing except for apples with it. And even the dressing, I don't think, was a green goddess dressing. So, I don't know what was up with that, but the it was fresh. I don't know. And then the tomato salad, which was one that I wasn't really interested in, was actually, like, super delicious. I really liked the balsamic vinaigrette that was with it. It gave it a nice, like, tanginess. Um, I'm not one to eat a tomato whole, but I, I very much enjoyed it. So, for me, they brought out the gluten-free bread because that bread has no dairy in it. And it was actually, like, the fluffiest gluten-free bread I've ever had at Walt Disney World. It didn't fall apart or crumble, and it paired very nicely with um, the sauce that comes on the side. I loved it. Um, as for the salads, I was really, like, iffy about the tomato one. I was like, I, I don't like tomatoes like that, so I'm sketched out by it already. But I really enjoyed that one. And I love watermelon, so I love the watermelon one. Um, the romaine salad, I mean, it was just it was just leaves. And if you want to have some nice greens in your meal, that's a great way to get your greens. But I wouldn't rate that at the top of my list of the salads. Definitely that tomato one. You got to go for that one. I would agree that the tomato salad is probably the best. The white balsamic on there added a nice acidity to it. And... It, the, the way the tomatoes were just kind of chopped up into big sizes, it, it just all felt very random, but it tasted perfect, and that's what you want. Uh, for the watermelon salad, it just, yeah, it just was like eating watermelon, which fresh watermelon's great, but I needed more mint, and the romaine and kale salad, I felt like it could have been good, but 
Uh, we do have allergies at the table, and so like they couldn't put the dressing on it. Not that I'd really call that a green goddess dressing. It wasn't like any of the other ones I've really had before, but uh, dried cranberries and pumpkin seeds, if they were in there, I couldn't find them at all. So it was disappointing. I might try to ask for one like served as it's supposed to, just to see if that changes anything. But salad course, you know, not bad, not bad, not the best. All right, so I also love the root and toot and tomato salad. It's fun to say. Um, the cucumbers were super like crispy, and then they had a big mix of tomatoes, so it wasn't just like the big tomatoes. They also had cherry tomatoes in it, which I really liked. And then the pickled onions was awesome. Um, the romaine and kale salad, just like everyone said, it had some leaves, so yay, leaves. And again, Watermelon's always delicious. It was just anything to write home about. Okay, once you move on from the get a wiggle on your greens, you move up to the round up some chow area, and that's where you get to enjoy a platter of all of the following house smoked items. You've got the evil doctor smoked ribs, which is now they've slaughtered ham and you're eating him. Uh, Buttercup's beef brisket, murdered Buttercup, you're eating him. There's a sausage in my boot. That's a fire-grilled pork sausage. And then there's barbecue chicken with style. Of everything that I had here, I actually enjoyed them all. I thought the chicken was very good. Um, and the sausage in my boot was really good. But I didn't know what it was at first because it was like curled up and looked a little bit like a tapeworm. But it was very good. Um, and uh, the brisket was okay. And I'm not a big ribs person, but I tried the ribs and... They were pretty good. So honestly, there's not really anything in here that I'm like, I wasn't offended by anything. It was actually surprising. It was uh, pretty delightful. But I would I would maintain that I think the chicken and the sausage in my boot were my two favorites. Then, sorry for the pause. Then we go to the reach for the sides. That's where you get to select, uh, normally it's like four, but we've got a lot of allergies at our table. So I'm gonna talk about the uh, the non-plant-based items that we got, which is the mean old potato salad. That's a homestyle red skin potato salad. There's the married spuds, those are the loaded potato barrels. Then you've got yourself the force field fried pickles, the slinky dog mac and cheese, and the cowpoke corn on the cob, which is grilled street corn. Um, they were all good. The potato salad, uh, I said tasted a lot like pickles. I've been corrected. It's the flavor of dill, and if you're not aware, dill does not come from pickles, even though I thought it did. Um, so it was good. My only complaint about the potato salad is that texture-wise, it's like potato soup more than potato salad. So like, I wish the potatoes were a little thicker cut, but like the flavor of it is really good. Um, the married spuds, um, which said loaded potato barrels, it's not like normal, I think it's like cheese sauce and like another sauce, like almost like a chili like a verde sauce, um, which I really liked that, actually. Um, I thought that was pretty good. The force fried pickles were very good. They were like pickle spears, um, like dill pickles, but like cut up. You're familiar with dill? I don't know if they were dill, but um, those were very good. They didn't have a dipping sauce, which was a little peculiar for, for fried pickles, I thought. But, um, but I thought those were really tasty. Um, Slinky Dog Mac and Cheese, it was... Uh, I didn't like it. I, it was uh, maybe like on the counter for a hot second. It felt uh, dry, but also a little thick. And uh, I don't know. Lois, it wasn't for me. Um, then we had the cowpoke corn on the cob, which was the street corn. I enjoyed it. I said, for me, I was like, it needed a little something. And, and Craig actually, I feel like rightfully said it needed like a hit of like lime or a little citrus on it to give it that little pizzazz, that little the little one up but surprisingly very good very fresh um like a sweet corn but um yeah right i pretty much liked all the sides too so that's my take erica so i got the trixie's plant-based trio that comes with combat cauliflower which has a harissa drizzle on it uh scrumptious bratwurst and then the rip roaring rib chop, which is barbecue seasoned and glazed impossible chop. Um, I loved all of it. I thought everything was really fantastic. Um, the the rib chop, I think I liked the best. It was like like a spicy meatloaf kind of situation, and the glaze on it, 
was it just really added to that. And I think it's really cool that it has the little like sugar cane as the bone part. Uh, the bratwurst, it was good. It's better than the other kind of like fake sausage you can find in the parks. Uh, but it was nothing like extravagant. Uh, I loved the cauliflower. It it was seasoned perfect. The the drizzle they have on top was just it complemented the the cauliflower amazingly. Um, I didn't dislike anything that was in that trio. As for the plant based sides, there's the the claw, which is a veggie slaw. You have the bucking baked beans, and then you have the campfire roasted vegetables. I, again, loved all of them, but my favorite were the baked beans. I thought they had the perfect amount of sweetness in them, um, and I was raving about these beans before we even started. I was like, I want the beans, and they better be good beans, and they were. So if you, if you like baked beans and you like them on the sweeter side, this is the way to go. They're awesome. I also loved the campfire roasted vegetables. Um, they weren't anything fancy, but all the flavors were there, the vegetables were fresh, and the seasoning was done really well. And then as for the slaw, it wasn't my favorite. It just felt like there was some contradicting flavors there, like mayonnaise and then like vinegar. It was just a little weird, but I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. So if I could just swap that out for something else, I know that you can get the barrels without the sauce on it and make it plant-based. Um, so I would have done that instead of getting this slaw. Uh, but that's my take. I really enjoyed everything I had except that slaw. Now that all the food's been talked about, I'm just going to be able to give my uh, favorites and my not-so-favorites of this meal. Uh, first off, I want to say, if it's all house-smoked, I wasn't getting a lot of that like smoky flavor from any of the meats. Maybe a little bit for the ribs and the chicken but definitely not with the sausage and not with the brisket at all. The brisket for me was just awful. Uh, I am probably gonna order a little bit more here just to see if a different batch comes out better, uh, but I thought it was terrible. It was dry. Uh, it, it just, it didn't, it didn't work for me at all. Uh, the sausage had a nice little zip, so that was nice. The ribs just had, it, once you like, chewed through that little bit of, of crust with it, then it just fell right apart and oh, they were meaty, they were good. Uh, and chicken, I was I was just gonna skip the chicken just cause it's a lot of meat, but then I'm like, wow, surprising. Really, really moist, but flavorful chicken. And the chicken I thought was uh, zipped up a little bit with some barbecue sauce. You have three options you can choose from here since no one else bothered to talk about those. You have sweet, you have spicy, and you have classic. The sweet is like, it's kind of like the barbecue sauce you would get around all property, like Heinz barbecue sauce, just like very molasses heavy, very, very sweet. The classic was kind of like, hey, we're gonna mix ketchup and vinegar together and it's gonna get real runny. We'll throw a little pepper in. Uh, I thought the sweet actually ended up, like, for me, like, that was a little bit more traditional than even the classic. So if you're looking for, like, that sweet barbecue sauce, don't be fooled. The sweet barbecue sauce is sweet. Then there's the spicy don't one, too. That's so stupid. Don't be fooled by the name. It is exactly sweet. Uh, the spicy is very much like the classic base, just with a little extra heat to it. Uh, I thought the spicy was my favorite, followed by the sweet, and the classic was at the end. Uh, I didn't try a lot of the plant-based, but I did have the rib chop, and that was like a like Erica described, like a meatloaf on a stick. Thought that was really pleasant. For the sides, at a barbecue place, I don't want just the meats to shine, I want the sides to shine. And I don't know if anything really necessarily did for me. Uh, it, you know, if you have to choose four, I would definitely go with the baked beans. I would go with the fried pickles, the vegetables, which were so fresh and just, you know, helped, you felt a little bit better while you're eating those. And then if I had to select one more, it would be between the street corn and the potato salad. It was just doused in mayonnaise, but it still tasted good because of the dill. 
the street corn wasn't that bad. It was just missing like a little bit of a citrus kick to it. it something, something like acidic to it to take away from just the sweetness of the corn. Uh, the most disappointing side for me was the veggie slaw. Like they threw mayonnaise in there, but then also vinegar. They couldn't decide what they wanted to do. It was all over the place. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of at an impasse right now about how I feel of this overall meal, but we'll maybe try a couple more things and see how it goes from here. So, similar to Craig, I did not like the brisket. It was really dry, really chewy. The ribs were excellent, literally fall off the bone. Same with the, I had the chicken leg, which I really enjoyed. Um, the classic sauce for the barbecue was awful. Sweet was actually kind of had a kick so he's a liar it's not just sweet and then for the sides my favorite side was absolutely the fried pickles 10 out of 10 cannot recommend enough and then I disliked the mac and cheese it was like craft mac and cheese but disappointing and yeah so I also partook in some of the plant-based options I actually tried them all there was the combat cauliflower, I think was probably my favorite. We got the the topping of it on the side, the walnut grumolata, um, and that was fine. I don't even think it needed it, honestly. The harissa drizzle that was on top was pretty good. It was a solid like cut and piece of a cauliflower, so I, I did really like it. The bratwurst was just like, okay. I tried half of one of the rib chops too, and I think Erica described it well as like a sort of a meatloaf. Um, I tried to eat the stick. You can't, it's a stick. I thought it was gonna be a sugar stick, like a sugar straw. Guess what? You can't eat it, it's a stick. But I put it in my mouth and I chewed and... You've learned so much. I've, yeah, I've learned today that don't put, just because it was in the food doesn't mean it can go in your tummy. Well, giddy up. We're moving on to desserts and here's how the desserts work. You get to choose one of the chuck wagon desserts. Uh, they're mini pies in a jar. You only get one per guest. So that's unfortunate. If you do want to try multiples, uh, you need to hope that everyone's willing to share your little uh, jars. And that's kind of what we did. We did a little sampling around. Uh, in terms of the jars, you've got Bo's Lemon and Blueberry Cheesecake, Billy's Chocolate Silk Pie, Goat's Apple Pie, and Gruff's Peach Strawberry Pie. Gruff's Peach Strawberry Pie is the plant-based option. So you got Bo Peep and you got Billy Goat Gruff. How fun is that? And then uh, for Lil Riders, there is a Forky Cupcake, which is a gooey chocolate cake, graham cracker, buttercream, and sugar cookie. Uh, it's really adorable. We didn't get it because we don't have any Lil Riders. I'm sure we could have swapped out one of ours, but we wanted to try all the pies. So that's what we did. Uh, I had a bite of every single one of them. Oh, dance party. Okie dokie. I'm very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> like, of all the things that happened, why could it not have been when Andy showed up and I could have, like, paused? Like, why couldn't it have been that? What am I doing with my shoulders? Just a lot of shoulder stuff happening here. It's done. I'm still going, though. Still going. Cut the, yeah, they're like, get this guy out of here. Okay, so that's all the Chuck Wagon desserts. Uh, we talked about there. Like I said, I had every single one of them. I thought I was going to enjoy the lemon and blueberry cheesecake the most. Turns out that was my least favorite. I felt like there was barely any cheesecake flavor in. It was dominated by the tart lemon. Not enough sweetness from the blueberry. Not great for me. My favorite was the chocolate silk pie. Uh, I am maybe wrong about how I feel about chocolate because I'm also sitting here sucking on basically uh, <laughs> it's basically a yuho with some rum thrown in it it's really delicious uh, and has you know of course chocolate flavor so yeah I think I'm really starting to like chocolate the chocolate silk pie uh, just very creamy uh, dense but uh, not overpowering with the chocolate flavor with the whipped cream really nice and the cookie on the bottom uh, the peach strawberry pie was right below the chocolate silk pie for me Peach strawberry pie. I mean, it was peach, it was strawberry, it was pie. Can't go wrong. And then apple pie was just below it. There was so much cinnamon in it. It was a better than average apple pie. But see what everyone else thinks about the desserts. I feel differently of the desserts than Craig. I, uh, I was the one who wanted the Bose lemon and blueberry cheesecake. And I, I do agree with what he said about it not really having a lot of the cheesecake to it. But I, I love 
lemon and that blueberry. And so like, I, I felt like I enjoyed the tartness. The chocolate silk pie is probably my least favorite, but I'm not like a silk pie person. And I feel like it was on the little bit of the bitter side for me, the chocolate was. Like just slightly bitter, not, not like dark chocolate, but a little more than milk chocolate. Um, but I mean, it was good. Like I get it, I get why you like it. Um, I, I didn't like dislike it. I just like, eh, I don't like a super chocolatey dessert. I thought the goat's apple pie though was pretty good. Very cinnamony, very, very cinnamony. I didn't try the peach strawberry pie, just cause. So I guess the lemon was my favorite, then the apple, then the chocolate silk. That's my ratings for me. So I got Gruff's peach and strawberry pie, and it's the plant-based option, as Craig mentioned, and I thought it was really great. I loved how the flavor of the peach and the strawberry kind of mixed really well together, and the topping on top, they're kind of like whipped cream moment. It was actually really good. It was very light and refreshing. And at the bottom, there was that kind of cookie layer. And I thought it really balanced out the tartness of like the strawberry. Um, Cause to me, I think strawberries are just like really tart, but I really enjoyed it. And if you are gonna be here and you're eating plant-based, um, you have a good dessert to choose from. So just try it. And if you're not eating plant-based, I would say just steal a bite from someone at your table who's ordering this. Cause it, it's worth the try. My top two favorite desserts were the Bose Lemon and Blueberry Cheesecake. The lemon on top was absolutely delicious, very tart, with the sweetness of the blueberries. It balanced very well. And then the chocolate silk pie, which you can't really go wrong with a silk pie, um, especially when it's warm outside, just because it's a nice, cool pie. Yeah. <laughs> Final thoughts on the meal and the experience. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I didn't think like negatively about it. I was kind of in between excited and not excited because I was like, it felt like this is a good family dining thing but I obviously, I'm just, I don't have children or anything like that and you know, so it was one of those where I was like, oh maybe this is gonna be like a kid oriented restaurant which it still kind of is but I also don't feel like it is like, you need a kid to come here. I think if you like Toy Story, you'd feel just fine coming here. And um, it's not as loud and chaotic as I expected, so I'm really happy with that in terms of the ambiance. And I feel like they have a good set amount of time in between any of the show elements that happen in here with like Woody coming on and like the Andy warning. Actually, the Andy thing where like we all have to freeze and it gets silent in the restaurant, I think is actually really cute. And I hope that they're able to do that beyond opening day. Cause you know, on opening day, I feel like everybody's a little more in tune with like the restaurant and the rules and everything that's going on. So, um, but I think it's kind of adorable how they do that. So th that's fun. I'm glad there isn't like characters walking around or anything like that. I feel like it would maybe be like too much with how much, uh, with how many seatings there are in here. Um, in terms of the actual meal, I also feel like I was pleasantly surprised. I feel like I was kind of going to be like, eh, but um, for $45, like for an adult, like for the base pricing of this restaurant, I feel like you're actually getting, I think like, I think you're getting your money's worth out of the meal, like for sure. Um, and I think everybody's gonna be able to find at least something on this menu I think they're gonna like. I mean, I, like I said, I, I, it's like the chicken was very good. Um, I mean, I won't go through the whole thing again, but I, I'm, I'm happy. For, for $45, I'm trying to think of all the sit down things I've done at Hollywood Studios, which really isn't a lot. Um, I actually, this is probably like, I think the best sit down restaurant for me. It's definitely better than 50's Primetime. I don't like that place. And I said it in the review that we did of that. But um, I think this is a really good addition for the park and for the land and for uh, the smaller, younger folks that come to the park. So I give it a, I give it a good thumbs up. 
before I get into it, I do want to mention it is $25 per child, which is also important to note if you're bringing kids uh, with your family here. And I do love this. I'm going to piggyback on what Rhino said. I haven't eaten at a lot of places in Hollywood Studios. To me, this is maybe the best. You know, for me, it's always been sci-fi is my go-to place in Hollywood Studios because to me, everywhere else just isn't that great. But this has just moved up my list a whole lot. One, the theming in here is beautiful. I, as someone who's eating plant-based because of an allergy I have, I feel like every bit of it was worth the $45 price tag as an adult. And I just think it just fits so perfect with the land. And um, compared, com, 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 compared to the last, sorry to interject here. Compared to the last couple places we went, which were before this video, we filmed a dining review at the castle at Cinderella's Royal Table and Be Our Guest. Where at Be Our Guest, I think we said that was when we had filmed it, was somewhere around like $67 for an adult. Mm -hmm. And we felt like, I know in that meal you said you felt like the plant based options were a little light and a little thin. Yeah. How do you feel compared to those places? That, that'll do it for me for um, Seven News. <laughs> so, great question. Thank you. For me, this is the place to go. I'm, I'm leaving full. I don't feel like I was served anything light. Um, it's a, a good, hearty, plant-based menu here. And I feel like this is the first place we go to that the pricing matches what I'm eating and what I'm being given. And I can order more of it with no problem. So for me, out of those, this is definitely the best for someone who's dining as a plant-based eater, vegetarian, whatever. So thank you for that question. That was great. But overall, I love it. Just, if you have the time when you're here, just take a little lap and look at everything on the walls, look at the ceiling. It's just, it's an experience. Definitely, I would say, come here on your next trip. For the restaurant as a whole, I loved it. I really had a great time. The interaction with like Andy's coming and everybody has to freeze was probably my favorite part just because as soon as it's done, everyone laughs and it's just really great atmosphere. The food wise, the top highlights for me were the desserts, of course, um, the fried pickles, and then the two meats, so the chicken and the ribs. Overall, I think it's absolutely worth it. The sides were not the best, but I think it still is a great value. I'm gonna be the negative one, as everyone always brands me with this, but uh, it's, I will say, for the money, you will eat way more than you could have possibly eaten at, you know, just like a, a regular restaurant where you have to, you know, a la carte with all your selections. Uh, that's true for any family style restaurant or a prefix menu. So right away you have to ask yourself, and do I want to feel uncomfortably full? Because that's the best way you're gonna, you know, make the most out of your money and you're gonna stretch that dollar. And for me, I do enjoy that, so I don't I don't look down on family style or prefix menus for that necessarily. Uh, with this one, like the salads, when all was said and done, I thought it was just okay. Like I got a second one of the romaine and kale salads to try it as it was supposed to be served with the dressing on. And we did find the pepita and the cranberries with it, but it was soggy and it wasn't very good. So like, yeah, tomato salad and the watermelon salad, both of those were good. The other one, not so good. Uh, my complaints with the meat didn't really change. I tried more brisket and while it was a little bit more fresh, it still is not good brisket. So I feel like the ribs and the chicken are good and the sausage is just like a nice filler. Uh, the I'm getting there, I know. I'm getting to the salmon. Give me a second. Uh, and that's where it gets hard because I think the rib chop might have been one of my favorite things, but I don't necessarily know if I would want to eat all plant-based just to get the rib chop. So that makes it tough. And then they do have a cedar plank salmon, cedar plank, plank saloon salmon that's available upon request so we did request it after we were done with our meats and honestly the salmon was just like a farmed salmon and it wasn't really seasoned at all it really just relied on the the sauce that they had on top of it which was like a soy glaze and it didn't do it for me it just tasted sweet and just uh the fish it didn't taste like 
great quality salmon. I'll just say that. Like, I don't want to say it was fishy because it's obviously fish, but it's not like a good piece of Alaskan salmon. I'll say that. And then the desserts were fine, but, you know, normally I wouldn't eat a dessert. And the sides, yeah, the sides were okay. Everything to me was just okay. So you either have to really want to be like, yeah, I want to come here for the atmosphere and I'm okay with the food just being, you know, good but not the best thing ever. Uh, or, you know, you might think that the food is good and the atmosphere is great on top of it too. And I'm just being a little bit harsher on this place. But, yeah, I'm, I, I don't think it's a bad way to spend money to come here. But it's, it's definitely... I, I think I would go like to Whispering Canyon over this, which I feel like is the closest substitute to Roundup Rodeo Barbecue, but it doesn't have this atmosphere because for a Toy Story fan, this is really, really great. So uh, let's go over the total though. We mentioned that an entree, uh, it, not an entree, apologies, a, a meal here, an adult meal is $45. And so we had four adults, each with the entree and then we also ordered drinks, so that's going to throw off the the bill a little bit. But obviously, four adults at $45, we're looking at $180 right there as it is. Then, obviously, tax and tip with there. But the drinks, again, throw it off a little bit because three of us got alcoholic drinks. So when we get all the way to the bottom of the receipt uh, here, the total for our meal after tax was $241.22. And then with a tip on there, we were just shy of $300. And uh, I will say too, with it, there is no discounts right now. So if you are a, uh, if you're an annual pass holder, Disney Vacation Club member, unfortunately that just doesn't matter right now. It is only, only, as it is without discounts. I'm sorry, the audio in here right now has distracted me. I was fully prepared for Andy to walk in and have to pause. And so that, that yeah, that got to me. It's a lot, it's a big environment in here. What do we got, what do we got? A lemonade? We got a lemonade. Sorry, we had a lemonade. So I will say there's also little cool things that we didn't necessarily get to experience with the meal. Uh, if you're a younger one or a younger one at heart, they do have little horses that you can ride into the restaurant on, little uh, wooden stick horses, so that's a fun little touch. Uh, if, if some people at some of the tables we've seen, they have uh, an oversized pencil that they get to sign their bill with that is about uh, the size of the receipt that we have here. So um, we didn't get that, but it's, it's a cute little gag. So everyone's into it right now. It's a fun restaurant. I'm so happy I got to eat here. And I know I will be back eventually to check it out again. Probably not for a little bit, but yeah, I there's enough here that if I can score a reservation for it, because it's probably going to be very hard to get for a while, I will definitely, definitely come back and uh, hang out in here. You know, it is, it is as Erica said, it's no sci-fi in terms of the, the, the full experience, but it's pretty fun. Fun for the whole family. How about that? So that's going to do it for this Disney Dining Review. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please, please... <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up and leave comments, questions, and video suggestions. If you are listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you can leave us a rating and review, please do that as well. And if you want to support us more, book a trip through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. But that's it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. We'll see you again real soon with another one. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay hungry. <laughs>